what has that journey been like from, as you say, Woolmus Prep, Immaculate, NDTC, Independent Corrigo for Performer Dancer, studying dance at Laban, and then now doing, what has that journey been like for you? Um, well... Greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations, one and all. This is episode nine of Fabian Say. I'm really excited. So episode eight was the very first interview with Yona Knight Wisdom, um, who was the first person to say yes when I sent her the request. And we're back in England again. We're back in England again with our second interviewee, who I'm really delighted to have this woman, this queen with me. Her name is Shelly Maxwell. So Shelly, you yeah. dropped the Anne. It used to be Shelly. Why do I remember calling you Shelly Anne? You remember calling me Shelly Anne because you know me from my Ida and Me. Okay. So, <laughs> Shelly Anne was the, the child at Wilma's Prep, was a dancer in festival, <clears throat> was the person that was in Wilma's dance troupe. The Shelly Maxwell just sounded a little bit more official. And as Shelly said, me know her from my Ida and Me. And having had a, a, a ringside seat when she was in Jamaica, and then a seat a little further away, you know, up in the nosebleed seats now that she's in England. Um, <laughs> it's so great to have you here, Shelley. It's a because, pleasure. Because Especially you, in the lockdown. Yeah, I'm telling you. Because you, you're just watching your journey is so inspiring. And I think very important as we, we push and we're still trying to build, as you know, the creative industries and arts and performing in Jamaica as a legitimate career, as a real, real something um, that some people are still doing lip service to, still struggling to monetize and treat like a career. And your career, you devise and create movement for stage, film, and TV. And this is what you do for a living. Um, yes. Big up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what has that journey been like from, as you say, Woolmus Prep, Immaculate, NDTC, Independent Corrigo for Performer Dancer, studying dance at Laban, and then now doing, what has that journey been like for you? Um, well, I like how you talk about it as a career because I had it as a career in Jamaica before I left. Nice. And the thing is, I think it's, everything is changing. It's constantly evolving. And when I was a young kid, um, I could look up and see other people in the business who were doing it as a career, but you didn't have a plethora of people. Mm. I really didn't think that dance was going to be my life or the nucleus to create a new life for me as it has, uh. um, which I think is where the beauty comes from. Because yeah. Jamaica, we're such a wonderful creative set of people mm. that we're constantly surrounded by culture and arts and music and it's just kind of embedded into us. So by osmosis, everything just comes into you and you become very rich with culture. So yes. as you go out on your different avenues and journeys, you are such a cultural ambassador naturally without thinking about whether you're going to harness it as a career or if you're going to use it in a different capacity. And so it always came back to arts and culture for, for me. Yes. Um, and I believe that you should truly follow what's inside and pouring out of you. And if that was what wanted to come out of my body, then I need to listen to it. Right. So uh, for me, I started pursuing uh, dance full time. I was teaching at Edna Manning College and I was also doing music videos, performing for corporate um, organizations mm -hmm. for their um, ceremonies or you know gatherings, whatever it was, um, creating other dance companies in Jamaica, doing choreography. And I was making a living from it. Um, but I wanted to really uh, push a little bit more and go beyond what I was doing. And when I, I contemplated leaving to do my master's in London, it wasn't to stay in London and it was to come back home to Jamaica right. and to take the knowledge that I had gotten and to utilize it in Jamaica to try to push things a little bit more. Um, but when I came across hair, it was very eye-opening. Because like you say, um, in Jamaica, we're pushing and we're striving to do things, but there's a lot of work to be done. 
Whereas if you go to say a London or a New York, things mm. are already set for you. Yes. And so all of a sudden you find out you have all these different platforms that you have at your disposal. And having that for the first time for me was such a rich experience. Cause then I was like, oh wow, I can actually just send in a little form and see if I can go and do a, a dance choreography on this platform. Or if I go and pursue maybe doing an audition, I can get into this dance company. So there's just a little bit more on offer for me to grow myself as an artist. It would have been a disservice to not stay for longer. And you said some really powerful things, Shirley, that fits, knowing what the fit is and then listening to that inner voice. And I find even as a lecturer, teacher, and somebody in the arts myself, when you're mentoring and talking to people, you know, it's that thing of people say, how, how do I know what my passion is? How do I know? And I said, you have to listen. It's that thing that keeps coming back. And even when you say the last time, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> and when it comes, you go, yes. And you go, why is my hand up? <laughs> and I say, in a weird way, the thing that you do for free, but the trick is to find how to monetize it. Because we get we, we get talked out of our passions because they say, you can't live off of that. You're going to starve. How are you going to eat? As opposed to, let's teach you and work on how do you monetize your passion? How can you earn from this thing that you love to do, that you would you do in your sleep? And that fit is crucial. Which dance teachers and or choreographers would you say had the biggest impact on you? Fabian, that's a very unfair question. <laughs> <laughs> I have been so fortunate. I think if I didn't list everybody who has It'd ever be taught unfair. Me, it would be so unfair. I love but, you. I no, love but it's you. True, it's true talk. And let me tell you why. Like when I first moved here and everyone was like, oh, you, you move very differently. And oh, but you can jump in and do the contemporary class. But then if you've got African class, you're all right. Too. Mm -hmm. But then the, the urban class, you're okay. How come? And I said, well, because I believed when I was growing up that I need to be a chameleon. So even though I was dancing with Woolmer's Dance Troupe on a Barbara McDaniel, I had a very good rapport with Lantinette Steins for La Catco and mm -hmm. me used to find a class with her. Mm -hmm. And then I was also very good friends with Tony Wilson and I used to do class with him. So right. I kind of stayed on one track. So I had all these influences from these fabulous, knowledgeable, beautiful human beings who just fed me. Right. And I just like the sponge. Um, Edna Manley doing classes there, you know, going to Cuba. I went to Alvin Ailey's summer school, just anything I could do to get more knowledge. It's nice. all about gaining more knowledge and experience. Even to this day, Fabian, even though you said big up my career and thing, I'm still doing workshops. I'm still nice. going and doing classes. I am still learning. I am looking for who I can learn from on the internet. Do they offer a workshop or a masterclass? Mm -hmm. I'm there, hand up first in line, doing the thing. Ah, uh, Ashe. We can have great, amazing teachers, mentors, tutors, but who are we showing up as? Because sometimes you're in the presence of greatness. Somebody's pouring into you, but if you're closed, if you're, if you're, if you're not open, you don't receive it. So some of the things that, that's important, especially for artists in, you know, in, I, I want to say in the landscape of Jamaica, I say to them, who are you being? So one somebody said, boy, Fabian, I love acting. And I said, what's the last play you went to? Um, okay, are you reading any scripts? Are you watching anything online? Um, I say, you can't call yourself a thespian and say you love theater, you're not immersed in it. I say, who are you reading? What into? And I said, there's a lot of stuff online. When I was looking up on you, you know, because I touched on it, you know, Woolmers, Immaculate, Yui, Edna Manley, um, Escuela Nacional, the Danza in Cuba, um, NDTC. Um, did you dance with Zymark as well? Yep, I'm a founding member of Dance There, so I'm a co. So, and in the time you've been into England, little girl, <laughs> between two, 2016 and 2020, you've worked with the Young Vic, Royal Shakespeare Company, National Theatre, English Touring Theatre, Royal Court Theatre, and some of them several times, repeat engagements as movement director and choreographer. Um, and, you know, you don't get repeat engagements if you didn't show up the first time. You have to show and so up. you have not wasted your time. You have not lay laid at all. And production wise, Streetcar Named Desire, Nine Night, Tartuffe, Echoes, Twelfth Night, <laughs> Hamlet, Macbeth. and a nice eclectic mix of stuff. 
So it's really an honor to, 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 to have seen your journey and have seen you perform. When you're not dancing, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> um, well, because I'm not really on stage anymore and I'm mm. more behind the scenes doing the making or the creating, I stay active. That's my thing. If, I do, if I'm not doing any form of exercise, I'll go crazy. Um, I also write. I've always kind of written. Okay. Um, poetry, also uh, short stories. Mm. Um, also going into kind of doing script writing now. Nice. I haven't really sent anything out into the world. Right. Um, but I think one day again, because we come back to that idea of evolving. Mm. I remember there was um, a lady in my life and she was the kind of person who would decide what you're going to do. Because she <laughs> the talent inside, but instead of understanding that everyone's journey is different, yes. she was like, I'm really good at this, so this is what you need to do. Yes. And I remember, like, all right, well, now that you've done this, you must leave, man, and you must make up your company and have mm -hmm. your own talent. And I said, I'm not just a dancing body. I'm not just a moving person. Uh. I said, oh, right. I also have other talents that I can use. I said, so thank you very much for your offer, but I'm going to go and, and figure out my journey. I'm going and to that's see so important. And what I love, Shelley, is, is your consistency. You referenced that when you were talking about Marley, that she'll choose because I, sometimes parents get next to me and say, I have no children, but I've mentored and fathered and uncled so many kids. And you, and you get to be on the other side when they're cussing their parenting and saying, no, but I understand your mother coming from, but I do get that. They're forcing their script on you. And I keep saying to parents, it's not your life. You brought them into the world, but it's their life. And sometimes, and parents mean well, but I'm like, well, you're choosing for the child though. You're saying, why you don't do this? Because you're good at it. So the, some people are really good at some things, but they don't bring them no joy. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a balance to it, you know, because if you look at stories, you'll hear the story about different people who say, well, I never really um, enjoyed doing it when I was a kid, but my mother and my father, made me do it and, and later me. yes later down i mean that's their career and they have yes. to do it yes yes i think i think there's a balance because you you want to see the talents in your child or as you said you know in in people who you're mentoring mm -hmm. and if you see the potential you want to nurture it for them but ultimately it is their decision yes so i know of people who nurture talents and then the person, like you said, I'm not enjoying it. So then just walk away. Mm -hmm. and you have to be big enough as that mentor to accept the decision. Yes, very much so. Okay, so in so talk to me now. What is the Maxwell Project? Um. So the Maxwell Dance Project no longer exists. Oh, it doesn't. No. Coming to London, I decided to do a lot of performing. So I got a lot mm -hmm. of performing under my belt. At that point in my career and my age, I felt that I had two choices. It was either to do the long game with Maxwell Dance Project, mm -hmm. which would entail lots of struggling, trying to get funding and mm -hmm. the arts council and all of that. Or I could actually just utilize myself as a product. Mm. Versus seeing it as a dance company, if I just saw myself as Shelley Maxwell, the choreographer, Shelley Maxwell, the movement director. Mm. So I made that shift to just use myself as a product, which meant that I would be hired for other people's projects versus trying to create the projects myself. So you switched? So I switched. So for lay people mm -hmm. who might be watching this interview, what's the tell explain the difference between a choreographer and a movement director? There's much debate about this, <laughs> but <laughs> Let's take it within the, the world of theatre. Mm -hmm. So within the world of theatre and plays and musical theatre, a choreographer is someone who will create dance sequences, who will create structured movement sequences mm -hmm. that they will teach to someone that normally you will have a lot of counts, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. seven. Do this move, do that step. It's very specific. Where with movement direction, it really is about working with actors on helping them to embody the characters that they're trying to portray. Helping them might mean just a suggestion, a gesture. Yeah. 
you know, it might be blocking and spacing of a scene to make the scene more impacting and effective. It deals with the flow of movement of the bodies in space. Mm. Um, again, help with the delivery of the overall story arc at that point in time. Right. And sometimes it's quite mechanical movement direction um, direction because it deals with transitions from scene to scene. Mm-hmm. So you might want to go. I just want to go blackout and next scene. Yes. I want to be more stylistic. So how can we keep the story moving? Mm. And that might be creating something that's not on the paper, that's not in the text, yes. but in with the story. I get you. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. So I'm going to ask you a two-prong question now. In terms of performer Shelley, what production did you have you performed in that you, was either the most memorable for you or had the biggest impact on you? Again, this is one of those questions, you know, Fabian. Every experience that I have had follows me in a different way. The most joy that I've had as a performer was actually when I was dancing in Jamaica, on Jamaican oh, stage. Oh, wow. That's when I felt the a most joy. Belly, belly bottom joy. Yes, as a performer. Yes. was nice. dancing on stage in Jamaica. The most maybe empowering moment that I've had was maybe dancing in the production of Fella, telling that life story. Yes. In a really touched and reached a lot of audiences. Nice. And um, and yeah, it was it was just a very empowering feeling to be telling this this black story, this black narrative right. in London for a hugely white audience. Yes. Um. And from the standpoint of maybe skill sets and garnering new skills, the Lion King was just a school on its own. Nice. That really, really, really helped me a lot with my artistry mm-hmm. from the standpoint of understanding lots of things to do with the technical aspects of a production, the backstage know-how and knowledge on a production, seeing how something like a machine that big Mm-hmm. operate i have used so many of the tools that i learned on that show yeah to feed in different productions i've worked on since which productions do you th- have done the same thing for you the sense of either i'm in purpose um or this one is stretching me and challenging me so yeah. as director movement director which productions have, have impacted you and stayed with you 12th night because mm-hmm. that was the first production that i did for the national Therso. Right. um was on their main stage, so their their biggest kind of stage in there. They right. have three different shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it was my second job as a movement director in London. Nice. There was a massive gift to have been given by the director. Yes. Put a lot of faith, obviously, in doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a comedy, and we had some fabulous actors, but the set design was just beautiful. It was a huge set with a revolving stage and it was a lot of different elements to kind of figure out. And I have a very mathematical oriented brain. Mm -hmm. So I I was in a ma'aki on that show. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the stage is revolving and we do which way counterclockwise, but then we have to have this bit of the set coming here and that person needs to exit. And so, yeah, it was really, it was lovely working on the the sets to get it to work on stage because the movement Mm -hmm. director also did stuff like that. But the actors also, I did a lot of work with them on embodying their characters, created some kind of sequences of movement, um, and it was well received. So that one stays with me um, as kind of the, I don't know, the first, the many firsts was in that show. Um, And then Equus, I would say, is very dear to my heart and I'm very Mm -hmm. attached to that production because it was a landmark event for many. Mm-hmm. And we were given um, leeway by the estates to uh, play with who the horses were and not have masks. Nice. And, um, and yeah, so I got, I got a lot of freedom to have a play and to stretch yes. and language vocabulary on the actors. Uh, to portray horses on stage without using a mask and without making it literal or pantomime. And it was very, very well received. It was. I, I remember seeing the reviews and got a lot of attention, critical acclaim, nice. Yeah. yeah that's, 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 that's such a great feeling to be in something and even at the, at the estate allowing something new. 
um, is, is, is powerful. Yeah. So I wanted some, I wanted some Shelley stories and spirit moved me to ask a particular person, uh-huh. Neela Ebanks, Neela Ebanks. And so her first response was, I don't really have any Shelley stories. Three messages later. So this, this the first message after that was, when you come up the mirror, they're in a school of dance because the students would not stop looking in the mirror. Yes. <laughs> yes. Said, your big thing was don't focus on the mirror. Focus on your body. Dance from... And she said, you, she said they kept looking at you. Bring some sheet. <laughs> Covered up the, the mirrors. <laughs> I said, yes. Then she remembered a commercial they had done. She, she thinks it was Digicel when you hurt your ankle. Yes. And turned up with your crutches for the final shoot. Yes, yeah. <laughs> she said a big thing with you from even back in those days that you were very clear and focused on the business and contracts and people getting paid and treated properly and knowing what, what I'm saying to me, what are you asking me? What are you giving me? What is this? She said she remembers that really clearly. You were always very good with that. Then she talked about Dance Fest, which she said was a beautiful gift you gave us. Um, but just that thing of thinking outside the box and doing something different. And she, she talked about transforming, it was weekends, from what yes. it was into a weekends. dance space. Um, so notice this starts with no Shelley stories to, <laughs> to, four, to four voice notes. So if you were tasked with completing the phrase, dance is. I say it all the time, dance is life. Ah. Because I say life is breath, breath is dance, dance is breath, and therefore dance is life. Because awesome. I get people coming to me all the time saying, in, a, in rooms they go, oh, Shelly, I just wanted to know that I'm not a dancer. And I'm like, that's all right. I said, when you woke up this morning, how you get out of the bed, and they're looking at me really quizzical, I was like, oh, you get out of the bed? I'm like, oh, I swing my foot out of the I said, great. I said, and when you were in the shower, do you sing sometimes and move? They're like, yeah. I said, lovely. I said, when you were going, how you get here? Bus or train, whatever. And they tell me, and I'm like, were you walking? I said, walking is movement, right? And I said, each movement, what you're doing, you're breathing. Mm-hmm. I said, you're breathing. breathing is moving. Movement and breathing. Life is breath. So I'm like, and if life is breath, breathing is moving, what is moving? And they're just like, Life. <laughs> there you go. And like, I see what you did there, yes. Oh, so now everybody who come and do the interviews have to play a game. So your options are rapid fire, which is I just call out some words and you just say what comes to your mind. God. The other option is mix up and blender. <laughs> One is called make me ask you something, which is a little milder, you know, things like your favorite color. And the other one is Jamaican trivia. I think I'm going to be really bad at rapid fire. And so I'm going to go with rapid fire, but I'm going to be rapid hard. At- okay. So first thing that comes to your brain, don't think. Oh. Money. Strawberries. Teeth. Mouth. Black. People. Sex. Fun. Twins. Not having them. Mango. Yummy. Hero. Nanny. Maga. Wedding. Bells. Mars. Venus. Soca. Music. Clip. Cool. Chocolate. Egg. Murder. Mystery. Virago. As in a Virago person? Mm hmm. Rude and out of order. Feisty. <laughs> Crocodile. Tears. Butu. Tegereg. Ketchy Shubi. <laughs> Samphai. Bunu Nunus. Sweet sub. Ah, that's it. You survived it, didn't do too badly. <laughs> but I just started doing like, I felt like it's in first aid in English where you're just doing synonyms or antonyms or something. <laughs> Whatever comes to your head. All right. Shelly Maxwell, it has been such a pleasure talking with you, hearing from you. Um, I'm really, really excited and honored with this interview because I say the journey, the journey, I've been blessed to see you as a performer, as a young person finding your way, um, just just 
have sat in theaters with my mouth open when you perform. I'm glad you're in the world. Oh, thank you very much. And I'm glad I, you're doing what you're doing. I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing too. And thank you for being here on Fabian Say for episode nine. Shelly Maxwell, dancer. <laughs> Blessings, my dear. Love you. And bless of yourself. All right, take care.